Hello, I hope you're having a great day so far. Both super and this are pretty confusing, but don't worry, because in this video, you are going to learn what the super keyword is, you're gonna learn how to use the super keyword with variables, methods, and constructors, and you're gonna learn other important parts of the super keyword. But first, if you're new here, my name is Alex. I post a Java tutorial on this channel every single week and have been doing so for about a year and a half now. So if you might be interested in seeing more from me, then consider subscribing. Okay, we're in Eclipse. We'll just make a new project together by going to File, New Java Project. We're gonna call this Superman. Hit Finish, and then inside of that, we'll make a class. We'll call it Vehicle for this example. We're gonna be doing stuff with classes. That's how the super keyword is used. So we'll just do it this way. We're actually gonna delete the main method here and start making some classes. Super looks like this, super. When we type it, it turns purple, which means it's a keyword in Java. Super is called a reference variable and refers to the super class in an inheritance relationship. That probably made no sense, but we're gonna break it down, okay? So before we can use super, we need to create an inheritance relationship. Inheritance means there are two classes. One's the daddy class, and one's the little kid class, super and subclass. We're going to make another class in here called car, and that car is going to inherit things from vehicle. And this will all make sense here in a second. So we'll do public class car, just kind of the same format as vehicle. But Java doesn't really like you to make multiple classes in the same file. So we have to take out this public keyword. That'll let us do that. So say a vehicle has a max speed. So we can create a variable here called max speed. And we'll say it's like 120 miles an hour. And if you're curious on what we're doing, we're just making a class. And a class is a blueprint for an object. This is the basis of object-oriented programming. We have this vehicle class, which will help us make vehicle objects. Every object in the world has things it can do and properties. So in Java, we represent properties as variables, just like we did here as a max speed variable, and things it can do as methods. So all that goes in here are just variables and methods. We added one variable called max speed, which is an integer. And we have this other blueprint for an object called car. We're gonna make car objects. And a car also has a max speed. So instead of making our own max speed in here, like this, say the cars is 100. Instead of doing this, we can just say extends vehicle. Now the car knows everything that the vehicle has. So if we made a main class here called main that had a main method, which just lets us run our code. A main method looks like this. It's got these keywords, public, static, void. It's called main and takes in an argument of a string array called args. So whenever we click the green run button, we'll run code in here now. And what we wanna do is test that the car actually does know max speed. And don't worry, we'll get to the super keyword in a second, but you really have to understand this first. So we'll make a car object, car C equals new car. This is the format how you would make any, um, any object in Java. So we make a car object and we do C dot to bring up everything that that object knows and it can do. So the variables are up at the top and the methods are down below. Every object just has those two things variables and methods. We can see max speed here, so that's pretty cool. If we print that out, chuck that in here, we run it. <coughs> Oops, this is running a previous program, I believe. And I actually think I might have to put the main method in a new class, so I'll just call this main, include a main method, and then instead of having this here, I'll just put it in there so we can run things a little smoother. Since this is in the same package here, main knows what a car is. 
because it's in this other class. And it was a car and a vehicle because they're in the same directory or folder. So now if we run this, we'll see 120 gets printed out because we click run. We go into the main method. We make a car object, which it knows because it's right there. And then we print out that car object's max speed. Since car, since this car object extends vehicle, it knows everything inside a vehicle. So it knows the max speed, and that's why it prints 120. Pretty cool, right? Now let's use super on variables. Since car is the subclass and vehicle is the superclass, we can call the super keyword in here to refer to this object's variables and methods. So if we got a max speed here, max speed is 100 like before, there are now technically two max speeds. There's the car's max speed and the vehicle's max speed. If we write a method to display it, say public void display, and all it does is print out max speed. If instead we call c.display, then this will run this code. So let's save and run this. Now we see the max speed is 100. But we could use super.maxSpeed to grab this one because super is a keyword that creates a vehicle, which is why we can do dot to bring up the variables and methods that the super class knows. That's why it's called a reference variable. It refers to the top one. So now if we run this, it'll print out the super classes, which is vehicle, vehicles max speed. So that's how you would use super on variables. Now let's use super on methods. It works the exact same way. So say vehicle now has a method. Say so it'll be a public method. It won't return anything, so we do void. And we'll just print out, we'll call it room. And all it'll do is print out room room. And again, since the car is a subclass of vehicle, it knows everything inside a vehicle. So we could technically do C dot room. But we want to practice using the super keyword. So now if car had a method called room, room, and this car method maybe went skirt like that. Then this would print out skirt because it's prioritizing the vroom method in car. Car technically knows two vroom methods now. It knows the one here, which goes skirt, and it knows the vroom method up here, which goes vroom vroom. So if we ever wanted to change this method to run code up here, instead of doing this, we can do super dot room, which refers to this one. Save and run, we get room room. So super helps us use methods from the parent class, which is really nice. Imagine having 100 methods in a super class and you just want to use one of them. You can just do super dot that method name instead of having to re-implement it, re-put code in it yourself. Very nice. Super is a great keyword. Now let's do super with constructors. This is, I think, mostly super is with constructors. So let's practice that. A constructor is a method that makes the object. Like I said before, I'm going to keep drilling this into your head. A class is a blueprint for an object and all it has are variables and methods. A constructor is just another method, but it's special because it sets up the object. So when we go here, car equals new car, this car here has parentheses just like a method. You see the main method has parentheses. Um, yeah, all methods have parentheses. And so this one has parentheses, so it must be a method, and it is. But this is a special method, it's called the constructor. This one's the default constructor because you don't see it in here. It just takes the name of the class, puts some parentheses there, and helps you create that object. So if we made our own constructor like this, 
car. Now this is the constructor since we like explicitly wrote it out. So now if we do, we are in constructor. If we save and run this, just by making it, it'll go to the car constructor. And since we made it, it'll run this. So we'll get this little guy. We'll just change this to car constructor. And then we'll make one for the vehicle. So we'll say vehicle, we'll print out vehicle constructor like that. And the reason we have constructors is because sometimes you can put nice parameters in here, like say this one takes in a max speed and then you can set it like this. And then you would say that this dot max speed equals the max speed they enter. And so that's how you would create a constructor with a max speed parameter. But I have a more in-depth video on constructors you can check out on the screen now if you're interested in that. But this is just a simple constructor. It doesn't take in any parameters. So now if we run this, we create the car and it runs both which is interesting because we create a car object which creates this and runs this. But first, since it extends vehicle, we also make a vehicle one. It's a little tricky, but if we now do super, this goes to the super constructor as well. So if we save and run this, it does the same thing. If we remove to this, then the car constructor would just call the super constructor, which is vehicle. And if this weren't in here at all, it would still call vehicle. If we didn't have this, it would still call vehicle since it extends it. So let's do a little final example here with super. Say we have a real looking class and we have that max speed again in max speed. And then we have a default constructor and we have another constructor that takes in a parameter max speed. So we have vehicle constructor with speed. And then in here, we'll just set up the object by saying that this dot max speed equals max speed. This and super work exactly the same, except super refers to the parent class, but this refers to the class it's in. So we can say this max speed is equal to the parameter max speed. So that's really the tricky part of the super keyword. An important thing to note is that when you make the car constructor and you do super, and then say there's something else, maybe like some setup of variables in here, we'll just print out car constructor again. This super has to be above whatever's in the car constructor. It's kind of weird. So if this were after it, it wouldn't work and you'd get an error because car extends vehicle. So it needs to have the vehicle constructor first. So that can be kind of tricky. Just super has to be first. That'll fix your problems. So super works with variables, methods, and constructors. The tricky part is it just refers to the super class. So we'll just take this one for example, super. This now technically is a vehicle. It refers to vehicle as a reference. And treat it like a vehicle so we can do dot and bring up everything that that vehicle can do and knows. Right now it doesn't know anything. So if we had something like um, number of doors, for example, and now we did super dot. We bring up number of doors. That's basically it. If you have questions or want to discuss this further, you can reach out in the comments. I hope this helped you learn the super keyword. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video.